pray for your parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings upon our reading. Amen. So, you can summarize as uh, you've read. Jesus is telling them and us, telling his disciples and us, do not be deceived to those who try to deceive you, to those who try to tell you what's going to happen in the future, especially concerning the second coming, the end of the world. Why is it second coming? When did Jesus first came to earth? Huh? No. Christmas, amen, about 2,000 years ago, and he died on a cross to save us, to give us salvation, and he rose from the dead, and, and when he ascended into heaven, he said what? I'll be back, right, to judge the living and the dead. That's what we call his second coming. When he will, he will be back, when he's back, and this is going to cause the end of the world. You get it? And so, and everybody anxious to know when would that be? And tell us the signs. But Jesus is saying, and there is rumors of the, of the nations against the nations and, and wars going against, uh, rumors of wars and persecutions and people will hate you, but it will not come right away. It will come in God's time, right? And so what should we be doing, Jesus says in verse 19, what? Stand firm. Didn't Jesus say, stand firm so that you will win life? So whatever things going on in our lives, Nowadays, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the Bible is describing modern days, isn't it? I mean, the rumors of wars and, and uh, earthquakes and a famine and all that's going on. It looks like the, the end is nearer to us. But we, nobody knows when that will be, so what? God says, Jesus says, stand firm, meanwhile, right, until he comes back. So how do we stand firm? How do we stand firm? And so today, since uh, this is a very uh, fun day, we are just going to look into only two W's. It's easy, no-brainer uh, to uh, do this one. Amen? So you're paying attention, all cake is. All right, where's Elijah? Elijah was a good uh, trooper. Um, now, verse, look at verse 12. You were persecuted. People will persecute you, right? What was the reason and what was the purpose of a persecution come to you? Verse 13, Jesus says what? And you will. Bear what? Testimony of me. So, in a sense, Jesus is saying those persecutions, be, you, because you are going to be persecuted by the world, by the people, because you are Christian. And that purpose is to witness God's power, witness God's love and grace, God's goodness and mercy is power all the days of your life. They can persecute you, but God's going to what? Protect you. God's going to give you words to say. God's going to give you wisdom. God's going to uh, give you the way out. That's what, and so that you can be witness the gospel of Jesus Christ to whole wide world and to those especially persecuting you. So, 
in somewhere along the uh, whole wide world, if you are Christian, you lose your job. If you are Christian, profess that you follow Jesus Christ, you may uh, get separated with your uh, families and you may end up in prison or in worst case scenario, you may lose your life. But to Americans, American Christians are persecuted? Not as much, right? Not as much. You know why? People, why does people persecute uh, Christians? Because they are different. People don't like, you know, somebody is different, right? Because Christians try to choose to live according to the purpose of uh, their lives, and Christians, good Christians, will choose to follow the desires of spirit rather than desires of the world and the flesh. Now, if we choose, if we live according to the spirit of living God, the world will hate us because we are different. But if we try to do, keep up with the zones, we try to do, to just uh, uh, be in the group of what the world is doing, do the same activities, following their practices, well, you are one of us, so they're not going to persecute you. So have you been persecuted because you are Christian? Hmm? You guys are getting persecuted in school because you are Christian? Um, mm -hmm. All right. That was your question. Have you been persecuted in school? No. Have you been bullied by bullies? All right. Now, there was a guy. He was a very small statue and weak. And he's been bullied by bullies in school. Every lunchtime, they take his money, lunch money, five bucks. And he tried to witness God's love and grace and forgiveness and be nice to them. But it's every lunchtime, and these bullies take his money away. So he says, enough is enough. I'm going to learn I'm going to fight back. I'm going to learn how to defend myself. So he decided to get a karate lesson, right? And the karate lesson guy is saying that he has to give him, what, five bucks for a lesson. So he figured it's not worth to learn to defend himself. He decided to just give the five bucks to bullies. Hmm? It's a funny, right? Oftentimes, we as Christians, the world bully us. And if we have to learn to defend ourselves, it's going to cost us. Not only money, cost our time and energy to learn and memorize and to live according to the uh, Bible or according to the, our purpose, and we get tired. Well, it's easier to just do what my neighbors do, easier to just, we forget that we can do all things in Christ. We forget that our God wants us to walk by faith, no matter what, persecutions or not. When we do, and the Bible says what? Verse uh, 17 says what? Uh, not a single hair on our head is going to perish because God will protect us. Why would God protect us. Why would God will protect us? Because I am a child of Most High God. You are a child of Most High God. You are a precious uh, commodity for our God. God says you are a special possession. Why is that? All right. 
Have you heard this? Everything values, it depends on whose hands in it. Do you remember? If uh, basketball in Marcus' hand, how much worth would it be? How much do you pay for the uh, basketball? Like 19 bucks, 20 bucks? And if he ha has them and in his hands, how much would it worth? 20 bucks? And then the time goes, he uses it and mud and et cetera, it devalues, right? Depreciates. But how much of the same basketball is in the hands of what? Michael Jordan. How much worth would that be? Would it be? Hmm? 33 million. And I spend the 50 bucks for my golf club. And if it's in my hands, it's worth less than 50 bucks, right? Time goes by. But if it's in the hands of Michelle Wee or Tiger Woods, he doesn't make any money nowadays. <laughs> After Tiger Woods fall, I never watch golf games, so I don't know who's making big bucks. Bob, tell us who is. Phil Nicholas, Nichols, Nichols, Nicholson. If uh, same golf clubs in his hands, it will worth how much? Billion dollars, probably. Two fish and five loaves in my hands, how much worth it would be? Two fish sandwiches. Right? But if it's in the hands of our Lord Jesus, how much would that be? How much worth would that be? Fed 10,000, 5,000. It's a much, much miracle, right? It all depends on whose hands in it. So, our life, your life is in God's hands. Where does the Bible say that? Your life is in God's hands. Where does the Bible say that? John chapter 10, verse 28. That is my favorite one. Jesus says, I gave them eternal life. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Your life is in God's hand. And... Who holds the heavens in his hands? Our God. When your life is in God's hands, you are going to worth trillion, ten trillion dollars and more. If it's in your hand, even if you are a billionaire, it all much compared to unlimited our God, right? What's 10 trillion, trillion, billion dollars look like? You stack up $100 bills, fill the whole sanctuary, fill the whole the, uh, holes. You're never going to able to spend it all, entire, even if you live 200 years. That's how much you are worth in his hands. Your life is in his hands. So therefore, God will protect you, right? Because you are very valuable, very special, God's special position. So only thing we've got to do when we go through trials in our lives, tribulations in our lives, only thing we've got to do is what? Trust him. Trust him. Stand firm. Walk by faith. That's all it requires. That's all requires until when? When our Lord Jesus comes back. Amen? So what would be the first W? Walk, what? Walk by faith. Walk by faith. So turn to your neighbor says, I will. 
walk by faith, no matter what. I am, my life is in God's hands. You say it, you confirm it to yourself. Our life, your life, in God's hands. So no matter what, persecutions or not, and trials or not, tragedies or not, God will give you the strength to go on. God will protect you from all harms. And not a single of your hair on your head will perish. Amen? Praise God. And the second W is this. So verse 14, the word of God says what? So therefore, make up your mind, right? Not to worry beforehand. Not to worry about what tomorrow will bring. This is your decision, and this is a decision. Make up your mind. And in other words, trust God and obey his command. Do not worry what tomorrow will bring. Now, do you guys worry about anything? No? no? Life is good? Do you guys worry about anything? No, our adults worry about everything. They even worry about their worries. Did you know that? Because if we worry, we don't, it's a sign of a, a lack of faith. So it's a, a sin. So we worry that we worry. You know, there was a guy. His nickname was a, a warrior of worries. All right? And he worries about everything, anything. He worries about his uh, finances, his uh, wife, and his, uh, his uh, children. He worries about his uh, job. He worries about his neighbors. And he worries about world peace. He worries about everything, election, everything. And one day, he stopped worrying. So a friend says, how come? I haven't heard you worrying today. And the warrior of uh, worries said, well, I hired a guy to worry about everything before, for me. What? You hired a guy? And how much does it cost you? And $1,000 a week? Hey, you cannot afford to pay him $1,000 a week. The warrior of worries said what? That's not my problem. That's his problem. <laughs> He's going to have to worry about that. Uh-huh. And so we laugh at the joke, but it's a truth, a foundational Christian faith in that. Hmm. We didn't hire the guy. We didn't have to pay for the guy. We didn't have to work for the guy. But he offered all the worries to bring it to me. Who would that be? Jesus. Our Lord Jesus says, all your heavy burden, come to me. I will give you rest. What a friend we have in Jesus. Needless worries we go through because all because what? We didn't take it to him. Hallelujah. We have Almighty God, our Lord Jesus, will worry about everything for us so that we can stop worrying. God says, worry not. Amen? Amen? That is a trust and obey. If you trust God, you count on God, you have nothing to worry about what tomorrow will bring. Amen? And a Christian guy, auto mechanic, the, you know, who can fix the car very well, and he got laid off. And uh, he prayed the prayer and give all his problems to Jesus. And meanwhile, he's uh, looking for a job. And he um, 
was collecting the um, recycled cans in a park. And uh, one day, he encountered a limousine was uh, broke down, and the driver tried to uh, fix the car. So since he's a mechanic, he hopped in, and it was a simple problem. He fixed it. So the limousine owner of the limousine and rolled down the window and tried to pay the guy, mechanic, and the mechanic refused to accept it. It's a nothing. He refused to accept it, and he says, this is my skill. God has given to me. I'm glad I can help you. It, it wasn't much, you know. So he didn't accept the payment. And the limousine owner was so impressed. And a few days later, the mechanic's wife received a beautiful bouquet of flower from the limousine. Uh, owner, and uh, with the sealed envelope, uh, it had with a letter that was notarized and says this: "All your mortgage payment is paid in full." Aha! Uh -huh. Wouldn't you love to have that? You know the story says. Are you curious about the limousine owner? Hmm? No? It, it, it was said uh, Donald Trump, president-elect, because he's in the, the, the real estate tycoon, he knew what to do. And he didn't verify the story or deny the story, but that is what it came about. We love to have those things happen in our lives, don't you? Yes, and we love to have uh, somebody in our path that is uh, capable of doing those things, right? Yeah. Amen. And we, do you know we have that person in our lives? Do you know? Hmm? When you trust and obey, it will be taken care of. All your needs will be taken care of. Our God has promised. Look at the birds in the air. Look at the lilies on the ground. They don't work. They don't pour sweat. But they are fed. They are fed and they are well taken care of. How much more? You are God's special position. How much more? God will protect you. God will bless you. God will give you what you need. So worry not until the day comes. Stand firm in Christ's solid rock. Amen? Amen. And that is what second W will be. The easy, no-brainer. What is that? Worry not. 